Hello, my friends. Grim here. I hope you're well today. Playing a Zealer this season, and he's coming along nicely. I'm just going to show you a little bit of my gear as we do the intro to this video. I would say that we're at about an intermediate stage with a few items being endgame worthy, but most of them being stand-ins for what will eventually be our final build, if indeed we stick with zeal and don't respec. This video is not about what we're wearing right now in the intermediate stage. This video is about what to do when you're two days into the ladder, you have just respect out of holy fire because it's not cutting it in late nightmare anymore, and you have just a handful of perfect gems and a few low runes, not low as an L-O, but as an L-O-W to your name. How do you gear a zealer so you can start getting through hell on a shoestring budget? Thank you for hanging out with me and let's jump right in. You need a weapon, and you need a weapon now. That is why Butcher's Pupil is the first item on this list, boasting deadly strike, open wounds, respectable damage, and increased attack speed. This is a very, very strong weapon for as early as it can be used and as cheap as it is to acquire. Those are all staple affixes for a zealer. It's very, very good bang for your buck, and on top of that, my friends, it is indestructible. When you're struggling in an undergeared state, it can be breaking the bank just to keep your mercenary going. It can also break your momentum up to be constantly going back to town to repair. Fear not, because when you have an indestructible weapon, you don't have to worry about any of that stuff. You just have to repair the rest of your gear on the occasions that you're already going back to town. So for that reason, and more, Butcher's Pupil is a wonderful budget starter item. I got mine for two perfect gems, and it was an above average roll. If you're willing to pay a little bit more, you can get perfect or near perfect for stuff like Ko or Fal that may not, that may be desirable early ladder, but won't really hold value into mid and late ladder. And either way, whether it's a high roll or a low roll, whether you're spending most of your budget on it or just a couple of gems, Butcher's Pupil is a great start. Next up is Talrasha's Haradric Crest, and not only will you look cool and appropriately fearsome wearing this particular death mask, it's also really, really good for the price. The only real downside to it being on this list is that you have to wait till level 66 to use it. But, assuming that you haven't gotten anything better by then, which honestly, odds are you haven't, this is still a wonderful acquisition. 60 to life, 15 all res, and 10% life stolen per hit. That is a trifecta of very useful affixes for an early stage sealer. On top of that, 45 defense is nice, 30 to mana and 10% mana stolen per hit are not the most important aspects of this particular piece, but when you are otherwise undergeared and underleveled, this will help keep that blue orb nice and topped off, you know? Whether you're charging around or just zealing things and running out of mana, or whether you have a point into vengeance, smite, stuff like this, this is going to help you for sure, especially, as mentioned, when the gear is not otherwise up to par in that regard. Tall's Mask may be a touch pricier than Butcher's Pupil, but really not by much. If you're willing to throw a couple of perfect amethysts at a wide variety of listings, or make a game accordingly, or even a few things that people acquire to trade in bulk, like Ralrune, for example, this can be yours no problem. There's so many of them on the market, even though it's a relatively widely used piece. If you just take a little bit of time to find a deal, you can get it on a real tight budget. Next on this list is Duriel's Shell. Now your armor's gotta be good, a rare one is probably not gonna cut it, not one that you'll find at this particular stage of the game. There's many, many uniques, lots of armors out there, most of them are dirt cheap, and Duriel's Shell is actually the priciest item, potentially by a long shot, that we've listed so far here, although that's a low bar to clear. Still, it is a relatively large portion of the budget outlined in this video, so why do I recommend it so highly over perhaps cheaper alternatives? Well, 15 to strength, that's obviously awesome for not only just buffing your damage, but also hitting potentially other gear 
benchmarks, you've got high defense and life that both scale with your character level, which becomes really nice if you're doing like a lot of bail runs, or you're otherwise just leveling really nicely, but you just can't get the gear. Defense, as mentioned, is buffed another different way. That's obviously really nice. But the big things that recommend this are all res 20 with cold res spiking to 50, which is very, very nice in conjunction with a high life item to get those massive boosts to resistances. And specifically, cold res spiking nicely synergizes with the other two pieces on this list that I'm yet to reveal. And finally, cannot be frozen. This is really, really, really important for any melee character, not only for your endgame build, but as soon as you can humanly get it. And Ravenfrost is disproportionately expensive early on the ladder compared to some of the other options and alternatives that we'll be outlining. In other words, it is a better use of your limited wealth to get Duriel's Shell and Tal's Mask and Butcher's Pupil and the other things I'm about to mention rather than just spending it on the admittedly amazing Ravenfrost just to get that cannot be frozen. Ravenfrost will come for you later. For now, Duriel's Shell is a great source of cannot be frozen. And and the other nice thing about Shell, and indeed about Tal's Mask, is that when you do outgrow them or upgrade upon them, you can pass them over to your mercenary. Assuming you're using Act 2 or Act 5, they'll be great fits there as well. And speaking of the absence of Ravenfrost, we have Carrion Wind in the fourth spot here. This is a wonderfully powerful ring relative to the price I got mine for a single perfect amethyst and it was a nice mid-roll. This is such a good bridge from under-geared to well-geared. In fact, I'm still wearing it now alongside a Ravenfrost. Eventually, of course, we'll probably replace it with something like Bulkathos or a really good rare, something along those lines. But Carrion Wind is really, really respectable for the price. You're getting defense versus missile between 100 and 160. That's very important when you're under-geared and, of course, you don't have mobility outside of charge. You might not even have any decent faster run walk on your boots. That's obviously going to help you weather the storm of certain areas. Most importantly of all are the next two lines. We have 6 to 9% life stolen per hit. I need not explain exactly how powerful that is and necessary in some form, of course, on any zealer. And then Poison Res 55, that's a massive, massive number. Again, I mentioned how it pairs nicely with Duriel Shell, which spikes cold resist. Between this and Duriel Shell alone, your Poison Res is going to be all set. And then on top of that, you have just some pretty fun and cool affixes, 10% chance to cast level 10 Poison Nova when struck, and 8% chance to cast level 13 Twister on striking. Those are both helpful, even though they're not what defines the item. They're visually impressive, it lets you know you're using the Carrion Wind, makes it kind of unique. You have access to 20, level 21 Plague Poppy, not something I've really messed around with, but sure. And then 10% damage taken goes to mana. That's actually an awesome defensive ability that also, much like the uh, Mana Leech on Tall's Mask, helps your blue orb stay topped off when your gear might otherwise not really allow for it. So yeah, Carrion Wind for a single perfect Amethyst or some kind of random low rune that somebody's after or a few perfect gems, very acquirable, very powerful. Final item on this list, my friends, is actually one that is part of your best-in-slot endgame build. It is Laying of Hands. Now, depending on exactly how early you try to get this, it might be the second most expensive item I'm showing you here behind Duriel's Shell if you're doing it like 3, 4, or 5 days into the ladder. If it's more like 10 to 14 days into the ladder, it's actually really cheap. Once again, just like a couple soul runes, a couple hell runes, you know, a couple perfect amethysts, something like that, somebody will sell you Laying of Hands for that. And the reason it's so good, generally, is because it's got that increased attack speed, that fire res 50, it's got defense, it's got damage to demons, and it's casting Holy Bolt on striking. All of these things, of course, very, very, very nice. 
but particularly in synergy with the big cold res from Duriel's shell, with the big poison res from Carrion Wind. You've got 50% fire resist, of course, here from Laying of Hands. That means that you just need to find a big spike to lightning res from maybe your boots, maybe your amulet, maybe your charms, maybe a rare belt if you're not wearing one of the many cheap uniques I could have covered in this video, but we're sticking to a top five, so Laying of Hands has got to make that list. All right, friends, so there you have it. There are dozens of other cheap, useful, practical items I could have talked about here. Of course, what you find, self-found is always cool. Some rares can always be in the mix. If you have anything else you'd like to contend for it, potentially a better option of a very, very limited rune and gem wealth early zealer than anything I've mentioned here, please do leave it in the comments below. Otherwise, I will see you for subsequent videos. I hope your farming is going well, and I'll talk to you soon. Take care.